uh, lower income flats Angsana and USJ1 uh, was caught fire. This news came to, to light and we got to know from the kids this fire that destroyed about 100 over motorbikes and wow. 480 households was affected. Hi Albert. Hi Mr. Ken. Welcome to the studio and thank you for spending time with us today. Uh, you are the coordinator yeah. of DVFA or in uh, the longer version of it, uh, Dream Village Football Academy. And you also have not just a football academy but a football club. So you have DVFC yep. as well and you are looking into that. We want to talk to you a little bit about this social business. Uh, that is really making waves, uh, as far as I've heard, among uh, many young people and also their parents. So let's begin with you telling us a little bit about your background story, okay? And also, uh, your love for football. How did it start? When did it start, okay? So I'm Albert. I'm from Subang Jaya. Okay. Born in Brickfields. Oh. Uh, yep. So I have a family of three. So I'm the youngest in the family. Right. Started uh, my love for football when I was uh, doing my school days. Okay. So even to the extent that um, I just finished my study up to diploma, my ambition or my aim was to play for national. Yeah. Uh, so my love for football was tremendous at time. So I even like, decided not to pursue my studies. I mean, can't can you still do football even though you go to university? Uh, because I was actively playing the league. Oh. So yeah, I was playing the Selangor League. So it was the love for the football and the football got me grounded, disciplined me. So I didn't want to go further, I mean, away from my football. So I also worry that you go to overseas to further my studies. I might evolve in um, different things or doing some bad things. I, I heard that yeah. your parents actually wanted to send you overseas yep. to, to further your studies. Yeah, actually my parents, um, typically they are very typical Chinese, so they really um, encourage or they really stress in importance of education. Yes. So my dad really wants me to further my studies. Yeah. He even um, sent, wanted to send me after my diploma to Australia to further all my studies there. But I didn't want it to. So you felt all that will spoil your plans? Yeah. Your plans to be a footballer, to continue to yep. not just play the league, yep. but even to go maybe all the way to maybe the nationals. nationals. Yep. Was that on your heart? You wanted yes. to play for, for the national team? Yep. Wow, Albert. That's amazing. So you, you were so into football. Yeah. Uh, studies became like secondary. Yes. And, and although many more young people have said, yes, I get to go overseas to study. My parents want to sponsor me. But you are the other way around. Yeah. You say, <laughs> no, that would spoil my plans. Yep. I love football so much. So you stayed on. Yep. Uh, so I'm sure your parents were upset. Yeah. So relationship was turned sour you know, for oh. a few years. We then really been talking. Yeah. And... Uh, so I decided to start work, so that way I can actually spend my time for my trainings and my football. Uh, but you had a diploma, so did you get, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing what kind of job did you start with? So I started with a bank, so I was in the banking industry. Okay. So I have to prove myself because um, with the, with the, I just believe that education is a ticket for you to start comfortably when you graduate and so on. But then, um, I know football have uh, teach me a lot, so with discipline and uh, certain life skills. So yeah, um, I started in the banking industry. So I worked through rank and file. Where, and where, I cannot where, fail this. Which, which level do you start? Um, I was a junior um, exec, okay. junior officer. Okay. Yeah. So I really pushed myself. I really worked hard. You know, I really learned whatever from football. I applied to the work, and yeah, I cannot fail this. You know, and you could still play in the in, yes. in the leagues, right? Yep. yep. So you're working and then playing, uh, going for practices, etc. Uh, so, uh, did you stay in one bank for some years? Yeah, I uh, stayed for about two years, then I moved on to the next um, offer. So I got did you play it. for the bank? Um, no, I didn't play okay, for the bank. Because I know the bank bank. sometimes have got their own football teams, right? Yeah. So, okay, you were happy there? Yeah. Uh, and rank and file, so uh, how high do you go before you went to the next job? So, I went from um, junior officer, then I went to officer, mm -hmm. and then I went uh, promoted to a team coordinator. Okay, wow. Yeah, so um, the jump or the promotion is quite significant like about after two years or three years I will get the next promotion. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and then you went on to the next job, your second job? 
Yep. Uh, and uh, and and how long did you work there for? Uh, my second job, I worked for seven years. Oh, that's quite long. Yeah. And was that the last job before you uh, joined DVFA? After that, I got another five years of working. Okay. Yeah. All so right. I joined another um, competitor. So I was there for another five years. Okay. Uh, then only I went back. To so that's quite a few years of working yep. experience, yep. and then also playing yep. experience. Then of course uh, you joined DVFA. Yeah. Now as the coordinator of DVFA and DVFC, yeah. uh, tell me a little bit about that because I am sure. You had many thoughts, yeah. maybe even uh, prayer, and I think even more importantly, the support of your family. Can you tell us a bit about that? As I'm from the uh, banking industry, I was um, earning quite well. So one of the reasons that I joined, yeah, because um, we have the same passion and same love for the kids and also for football. Yeah, definitely um, financially, you know, it's a struggle. Yeah, but I mean, because it was a passion and also uh, it was my love for football and for the kids. And so, like, again, I said, it's the same dream. So, I, I know that, okay, this is the right, I know, the right job for me. You know, I really want this opportunity. Mm. And, of course, you, you had a discussion with your wife, yeah. who you later on told us that yeah. she also was very supportive. Yeah. So what did she say? Yeah, because, um, you know, I have a young daughter, I know, she's only 16 months old. So, yeah, financially, yeah, we're quite tight. And then, yeah. But then I've spoken to her, I told my wife, you know, um, I'm getting this offer as a coordinator in this academy. She's very supportive. She knows mm. I, I love football. I'm crazy for football mm. since young. So she really encouraged me to take up this um, opportunity because wow. she said, yeah, this is the only chance that you can really do what you're good at. Mm. You know, you will be the football and be the kids that you love, the community kids. So this will be a good platform for you to start or even to move wow. on from them. Yeah, so she, I... Yeah, we discussed a lot on the financial part sure. and she said, don't worry about financially, wow. you know. Yeah, we will go through this journey together, yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah. That's amazing yeah. because, uh, you know, it's so good uh, to have the support of loved ones yeah. and close ones yeah. and family members. As a family, you probably have to, well, both uh, succeed and also struggle yeah. together. Yeah. And the struggling together, if you have two persons saying, Yes. We'll get through this, we'll work out our budget, whatever it has to be done, has to be done, but, yep. but we will see your dream yep. uh, fulfilled. Okay, so let's get into DVFA now. What is DV, DVFA? Maybe you can tell us a little bit more what you do. Dream Village Football Academy, we offer a um, grassroots football training program. So, as you know, it's a social enterprise business. So, yeah, so we, our kids, or uh, how we actually um, survive on these things is actually um, we get this, some paying kids. That enroll for this our program. Okay. So it's um. So you have you have children. Uh, yeah, who children can from can afford. Yeah. And they and they pay. Yeah, they'll be All paying right. students. Um, will it be about market rate? Yeah, it will be a market rate. Yeah, yeah to be fair be, and yeah, also, I mean something that uh, people can afford. Yep. And those who can afford will will pay. Yep. Okay. So yeah, so we have these kids. I know. Yeah, they are paying at an affordable rate. Mm. So to join our academy, then from here we also we will uh, having we will channel or we sponsors community kids to join in our football academy. Right, okay. Yeah. Give me a, a number, uh, just a rough gauge, uh, um, how many uh, students uh, in, your, in your peak uh, did you have? Every season, we have about 70 paying students. Okay. Yeah, paying 70 paying students. And we have additional about 25 community kids that oh, wow. we are sponsoring or, or right. we are subsidizing subsidizing for this um, okay. training program. So about 70 paying students yeah. will subsidize or actually sponsor 25 to 30 yes. uh, non-paying uh, students yeah. who are mainly from the community. Yeah, the lower income or underprivileged income, from right. Subang or Puchong. The marginalized yes. uh, kids. So uh, how's it been? Uh, you know, what do you, what do, you do every week, every day? Uh, how, how, how does DBFA go? So our training is on, on every Saturday. Even like I said, we subsidize these kids. Even the kids are from Puchong or even far away, we provide transportation for them. So yeah, so they will come in on a Saturday, on a, every Saturday, we will train. We do feel some challenges uh, during this program or every season, whereby you know, we are so worried about um, not enough um, kids coming in to, to, to sustain this business. Yes. Because we're depending quite a lot on these, these kids, right. how to sustain this business. Yeah. Yeah, to able to support and giving to, back to the community. Because your heart is really to help the kids who cannot yeah. afford. Yeah. So you, your program needs to be good enough yeah. to attract uh, yeah. those who can pay yeah. uh, and so that all will enjoy fairly yeah. the same quality uh, of coaches that you have uh, and the program quality. 
you probably have to look out, right, yeah. for more of these paying students yes. so that you can help the non-paying students. Yes. Because with the non-paying students, as you said, you don't just help them with the program. Yeah. You help them, you sponsor their jersey, right? And transportation. Which, transportation, maybe yeah. it's food sometimes, drinks. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we do what, give and uh, provide foods for them also. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you have like corporate sponsors and others? So far, we haven't got any sponsors yet. So it's mainly from our DVF, our academy itself. Mainly for the fees. Yeah, for the fees. Do yeah. the parents understand this? The parents that pay, do they understand this? Do they actually like that model? The parents are um, very responsive. They are very um, appreciative supportive. with the way we're doing things. And they're very supportive for this program because where not only we're getting these kids in, I mean, we get the marginalised or the lower income, but we're having the Orang Asli ins also, mm. the Orang Asli community kids. Okay. So the parents is really um, supportive of our project um, because they only see the kids learning, but how they mingle with the marginalised or even to the work of people, you know. So they really love uh, how we getting these kids in to support them uh, with this good cause. That, I mean, a lot of the parents are very um, supportive of this Good. course. Yeah. Good. And besides skills, uh, you also teach other things, values? Yep. So in DVFA, what makes it special is that we incorporate life values into our program. So it's a special, uh, specially designed program that we incorporate all the life skills, our life values to the kids. Mm. So that not only we are building uh, or we're building a good player, but we're building a good character in them. Right. So that when they come in, play football, they learn some life values. Yeah. And so where they can apply on and off the pitch. They learn things like patience, yep. maybe Simple. how to be a gentleman, how yeah. to shake hands before yeah. and after the game, how to be a, maybe a good loser. Yeah. Uh, not a bad loser, but yeah. a good loser. <laughs> And all this kind of responsibility, like you said earlier, discipline, being yep. on time, yep. a lot of these kind of things, right? Saying thank you maybe and all yep. these manners. Yep. Uh, because some of these kids, if they don't learn it at home, then where would they learn it, right? So uh, hopefully, DBFA is one of those avenues, right? Yep. That's so good. Hi friends, at Dream Village Football Academy, not only I learned how to play football, my coaches taught me many life skills. If you love to play football like me, come and join me. Many exciting programs are waiting for you. Visit dreamvillagefa.com to find out more. like to uh, move on to talk uh, maybe about uh, other things that DBFA has especially recently been involved in uh, so that uh, uh, those who are watching can understand that uh, in your heart and the heart of the founders and the heart of DBFA uh, is not just football, not just skill but spirit and not just on the field but off the field. So uh, recently the, this um, lower flats or lower income flats Angsana and USJ1 uh, has caught fire. This news came to, to light and we got to know from the kids about this fire that destroyed about 100 over motorbikes and wow. 480 households was affected. 480, 480 households. 480 houses affected by uh, water supply, electricity supply. Mm. So DFA, um, as we're anchoring or we're sewing to the community, so we have already uh, organized a fundraising friendly match. Right. Um, to raise fund to aid the ref, uh, the fund to rebuild the Angsana community. So this was just impromptu, right? You just heard yeah. about it and yeah. you felt yeah. we've got to do something about it. Yes. Uh, and uh, then you just, I think, we, was it with just within a week? Yeah. You called within four, four, days, uh, within four within days. Within four days. Four days. Yeah, okay. four days. We did the last minute planning. So because it was, um, it was uh, urgent, you know, we need it immediately. Yeah. So money, we, yeah. we need to react fast. Yeah. So in four days time, you know, in four days, we managed to get four teams in. Four teams. Uh, yeah, four teams. We invited four teams to participate in this course mm. uh, to raise funds to, uh, to aid the community. The, the match was played just like a week after the fire. Yeah. Uh, and uh, four teams came that night. I was there, uh, so I was uh, pretty proud of what you guys were doing. And I think uh, you were able in just, just a short time 
uh, to raise about 2,000 ringgit. Uh, so DVFA was not just uh, Football Academy, right? It's, yep. it's, it's also whatever needs there are in the community, let's be the first one to act. To act. Uh, especially when it involves the young players, uh, yep. their home, their uh, parents' livelihood, etc. Recently, uh, DVFA have um, launched the after-school program. Okay. So not just a Saturday football program, but then we launched the after-school futsal program. So where DVFA will go in daily to the community, to the lower income community, okay. to teach them a uh, free futsal clinic. When we are going to this USA community, USA One Angsana, as we were engaging with the kids daily on a daily basis, so we got to know there's one kid or one of my players, uh, he's been out of school for seven months. Why? why what happened? Uh, this was due to truancy. He okay. haven't been going to school. So finally, he was shown a letter from a school to be uh, thrown out of school. Expelled, huh? Uh, expelled from school. But well, he's came, one of the players that comes Yeah, he came one play. of the players um, to our daily uh, FUSA clinic. Okay. So I got to know, so I said I have to take action for this young kid because I don't want him to be going the same field with me. Mm. You know, it's the same journey. So I want him to have education at least to have completed school. So I called up the parents, I said, what's happening? Uh, so I went, is this the case? So yeah, the parents also told me um, he's not been schooling for seven months and they don't know what to do with him. So I gathered the whole family, I gathered the kids. I even got the files from the school. So I went to appeal in the uh, Pejabat Pendidikan mm. in um, uh, Sha'alam. Wow. So I sent the whole parents, the whole family with myself. We were there to appeal uh, to get him reinstated or get him back to school. Yeah. It was then the pegawai or the officer told us that um, you should have come during the first month or the 30 days when you received the letter. Oh. So, but then it was way too long after like seven months. So yeah, they yeah. said it's not possible. It's very difficult to get him wow. back to school because it's already like mid year. Of the, uh, mid, mid year. It's mm. already like May, June. So we submitted the letter, the appeal. So we waited for the, um, for the result for one month. But day after day, we waited for two months. There's negative reply. There's no reply from Pendidikan. It was almost like impossible, right? Yeah, it's impossible. But I mean, because we have fear, we keep on praying. I keep on praying like I never do it before. So I pray. I say, I'm going to get a good result for this kid. You know, at least he get back, still get back to school. Thank God. Um, last week, we only received a good news mm. that this kid is um, getting back to school oh. after this Raya So break. they finally uh, replied? Yep. They wow. replied last week. I keep on Chasing after them, sure. following up. So last week only the reply came that he um, successfully received back to school, to his old school again. Yeah, so which is nearby great. to his um, community. So, yeah. so he got back to school. Yeah. I think the uh, officials were probably thinking what, like, you know, uh, usually nobody will uh, be so persistent uh, to, uh, to appeal on behalf of a student yeah. who himself may not even have seemed to be interested in school. That's yeah. why probably he was truant in the first place, you know. So I think some people will try once, try twice, you know, uh, a few more times and then give up. Especially when they told you that, hey, you should have appealed in the first month. Yeah. Why do you appeal only after seven months, you know. Yeah. But because of your persistency uh, and your care yeah. for this just one boy, right. And you felt like, yeah, he's one of your students in, in the football uh, clinic. Yeah. But it's more important that he gets an education. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, yeah, his life uh, would be harder. So I'm sure that these are kind of stories that get you up in the morning, right? Yep. Uh, because yeah. uh, it's so wonderful to be able to really help uh, okay. young uh, lives, right? Yep. It seems to me, Albert, that uh, you know you gave up your own uh, well dreams for further education because you had a bigger dream uh, of being a footballer. You love yeah. football so much. Yeah. It's gone beyond just passion for football to a passion for people. A yep. passion for young kids, especially, to give them a chance. Would you say that's true? Yep. Um, because when I was teaching or when I coaching these kids football, so I really see the little child in me, in them. Yeah. So the eagerness to learn, the eagerness to play, and uh, eagerness to come every day to the trainings and the coaches are there. So and because when I was younger days, I don't have this opportunity. So now that I'm here with the opportunity given by the academy or even the club to coach them to go daily or you know, weekly to the communities. So yeah, that's where I really want to help. I know I want to journey together with these kids. So I want to guide them and you know, to coach them or even to build life together with them. All this through football. What would you say is uh, one of the biggest challenge 
of running this? I mean, you probably said it earlier. Yeah, definitely um, of getting the business in or even to sustain the business. Where, you know, we have to do marketing, we have to, right. to get kids signing up, we have to get the parents, you know, uh, concurrence to, you know, to believe in this cause. Where actually, mm. most of them are very supportive. It's just that uh, they haven't seen a bigger picture of us doing these community things. Yeah. So now they know they have a bigger cause. Even some parents, they really message me personally, they say, great things that we are doing, you know, they're very encouraged with all this and they really hope that we can do much more. Right. Also because there's a couple more academies out there, right, uh, who will be sort of like your competitors, yeah. but I don't think you even see them as competitors, right, because you know you have a vision that is quite different yeah. from the other academies. So I think because of how clear you are that uh, you didn't just start an academy just for the sake of having an academy, yeah. but you started it for a bigger picture, you're, you're trying to sell that also to the parents yeah. uh, and also to the other uh, players and other, other I mean even the coaches right yeah. not easy I'm sure to uh, yeah. hire uh, coaches I think they're all part-time um, they are part-time yeah they are okay. part-time why do you think your coaches stay with you yeah I think they also believe in our dreams our vision because again I said our DVFA DVFA Academy our DNA have always been and always and always been have and always been the community and also football. Mm. See, at this when we're having this model or this kind of program where we not only just doing football program, but we are serving and believing into the communities, we are um, developing the kids, mm. bringing out the kids. Um, they are sharing the same vision. Are you open in the future to other sponsors coming in? Um, definitely, yeah. We love to work together with any um, corporates or even um, any sponsorship that as wants to. As long as they share the same vision. Uh? Yeah. Yeah, and then they come and support you. I think uh, one of your major sponsors is already uh, uh, in the form of Sunway University's uh, field, right? I, um, I yes. think they've been uh, sponsoring the field because they also believe in reaching out to the community kids. kids. Yep. And they have a really nice field, as uh, we know. Yep. Uh, and uh, it should be quite expensive to rent it. Sometimes, in fact, they don't even rent it to just right. anyone because it's an yeah. expensive field that they maintain. Yep. But they've uh, given for the usage of DPFA every Saturday. Yes. Uh, so we're thankful for sponsors like that. Tell me uh, a bit of your plans for the future of how you want to enhance uh, DBFA, I heard about uh, you wanting to do more friendly matches. So now we are gaining momentum. So we are getting um, some great players in from community, especially through this program. So we have developed a few of the younger kids from the academy and also from this um, community. So our plan or my plan for the academy was um, to have an elite team where the kids will get more exposure in playing, not only that in the academy, but they do get the journey or the path to go higher levels. So we're talking about pathway, right? Yeah, we're from this academy, pathway, basic yep. academy. Moving forward, we have more friendly matches for the kids to get more exposure, to make more friends, mm. to learn more football. Playing with other teams? Yeah, other playing, uh, yes, definitely. Playing with other academies. Then also, hopefully, uh, in the days to come, that we'll be able to send them um, to overseas or even mm. outstation for matches or even playing competition. Would you like to see some of your yeah. uh, young students one day play for the national team, etc. Would you like to see that? Yeah, definitely, it's one of our dream. Yeah, mm. to have um, to have our own product to send these kids to even to the national levels. Yeah, mm. yep. it's nice to see you know one cycle. Uh, when you were younger, you wanted to play for the national team, yeah. and now you will probably be developing many more Alberts in that sense yeah. uh, to uh, be able to fulfill <laughs> that dream. Yeah, that's good stuff, Albert. Thank you again for being here and having a chat with me. Uh, I hope that many more people understand what uh, DVFA is and hopefully uh, be involved uh, some way or the other in the near future. Please come back again to uh, this studio uh, yes. and uh, tell us more in the days to come, okay? Thank so you. again, thank you, uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. All of us, the younger ones, were not afraid of the teachers as much as we were afraid of the gangsters. Wow. All we wanted to do was like be as powerful as these, these guys.